Hi friends, in this video we're going to talk about how to interface with an SQLite database in Python using the SQLite 3 Python module. So we're going to cover what is SQLite database, how to create an SQLite database using an SQL query, how to insert, insert many, fetch, update and delete rows from a Python script in an SQLite database and how to do transactions in an SQLite database. So in short, by knowing these things, we can easily interact with an SQL database in our Python scripts. By the way, the whole content of this video is present in this blog post. So please be sure to check out the link of this blog post in the description of this video. So what's an SQLite database? SQLite database is a file based database. That means the whole data of a database is stored in a single file, just like a CSV file or an Excel file. This is a database file app.dp and it's actually an SQLite database. I'm using a VS code extension to view the SQLite database contents. So I'm able to see the database here and if I expand the database, I have a table called persons and if I run the table, you can see there are rows in this table. So the whole database is actually present in a file just like a CSV file or an Excel file, something like that. So no separate database server is required like MySQL or Postgres or Oracle. It's just a file based database. So mostly the use cases are if the application requires an internal database which is not concurrently accessed that means multiple applications are not accessing the database at the same time and the data read write speeds are not that much high you can use an SQLite database. So now let's talk about how to interact with an SQLite database in our python scripts. So you don't need to install a separate python module to interact with an SQLite database. There is an inbuilt python module called SQLite 3. It's really simple. Just write import SQLite 3 and connect to the database and give the database path. If it's in the same folder, you can write the database name directly or else you can give the file path like C user something like that. And once you establish a connection, you'll be connected to the database file. And after your work is over, you can close the database connection. So it's very simple. Create a connection and after your work is over, close the connection. And in the connection, give the path of the database file. Let's try to run this script. So I'm going to take a blank folder and I'm going to open it with VS code. Let's try to create a new file index.py so that we can write our python script here. So this is our python script. Let's try to run this. And after you run the script, you got a .db file which is the database file. Alright, this is just an empty database file because we have created it just now. Now let's try to create a table in this SQLite database so that we can do some operations like adding rows, deleting rows, etc. on the database. So let's try to execute an SQL which will create a table called persons in the database. So the SQL syntax would be something like create table persons and here in the brackets you will define the database columns. So I am defining these columns. So the ID column is an integer and it's a primary key and it will auto increment if you don't give the ID. And then there is a name column which is a text and it has 300 characters limit and it's not null. That means you can't provide null values to the name column. Similarly, I have given a column called DOB date of birth and it's a timestamp column and it's not null. And there is one more column called phone and it's just a text column and while creating the table you can even provide constraints like I have given a constraint called unique name and unique phone that means only unique values are allowed in the name column that means you can't specify two rows with the same name or else you can't specify two rows with the same phone number so this is going to be the SQL we will execute in the database to create a table called persons with these columns so how do I execute this SQL from my python script well, first you will import the SQLite 3 module and connect to the database and then you will run an execute command on the connection object to execute an SQL. So it's really simple, write connection.execute and as an input to the execute function, provide the SQL to create the table and that's all. The table should be created in the database. And here I am writing if not exists because if the table is already present, no table will be created and if the table is not present, table will be created. If you don't write if not exists, you will get an error when you run this script twice. In fact, before running the SQL, let's try to see what tables are already present in this database. You can use a lot of tools to view the databases like dbweaver which is my personal favorite. In fact, I have already made a video on how to use dbweaver to access databases. I will leave the link of this video in the description. But you can view the database contents directly in VS Code if you want. You can install the SQLite extension and view the database contents. So let's go to our extensions and search for SQLite. So this is the SQLite extension in VS Code. So you can install this SQLite extension to view the SQLite database contents in VS Code itself. So I've installed the SQLite VS Code extension. Now let's try to open the database file in VS Code. So I'm going to open the command palette using the Control Shift P and then I'm going to write SQLite. Now you can see the suggestions SQLite open database. Let's try to run this command and it will ask for the path of the database. 
since it's already present in the same folder it has suggested me app.tb so i'm going to go ahead and select this and now once you open the database you can see a tab called sqlite explorer here let's try to expand this and you will see the app.db database let's try to expand this database there are no tables inside the database now let's try to execute the sql command to create the database table so i'm going to write connection.execute and provide the sql to create the table let's try to save the script and run this now let's try to refresh the database and then you got a table called persons let's try to expand this persons table here you can see the columns of the person table let's try to play this table and then you can even see the data of this table currently there are no rows so this is how easily you can execute sql commands on an sqlite database we also seen the vs code extension for sqlite and using the extension is really simple open command palette with control shift p and write the sqlite commands like open database new query run query etc now we have created the table let's try to insert some rows into that let's try to see the example of inserting a single row you can execute an sql command to insert row into a table so the sql format would be something like this insert into persons give the column names name date of birth phone and give the values and here in the values i did not mention values directly like john the date of birth and the phone number here i have given placeholders for the values that means these values would be supplied from python using a variable that's why to provide values we have given a second argument to this execute function which is the employee dictionary so you can define the employee dictionary something like this the dictionary keys should be matching with the placeholders of the sql command so name dob phone these are the keys of this employee dictionary and provide values in python instead of giving it in the sql so there are two advantages one is it is convenient to write the sql and the second important thing is it's important for security because you can avoid sql injection using this method and after executing the sql command you can get the number of rows affected for example you are inserting one row so after you execute the command you will get a cursor object as a result and you can see result dot row count will have the number of rows affected that means since i have inserted the one row if the row is successfully inserted you will get result dot row count as one and at the end you need to commit the connection just by doing connection dot execute and providing the values from python using dictionary you can easily insert a row into an sqlite database table now let's try to run this script number of rows inserted equal to one in fact if i run this script again i should get an error because i have mentioned a unique constraint on name and phone that's why it's telling that unique constraint failed on phone column since we have successfully inserted a row into the database table let's try to see the rows i can just play this table and here i can see the row inserted into the database table since id is an auto incrementing column it has automatically given id equal to 1 that means if i insert another row id would be equal to 2 3 something like that so we have successfully inserted a row into an SQLite database. What if I want to insert multiple rows? Obviously you can do a for loop on the same code, but there is more efficient way. There is a concept called execute many. That means you can give a single SQL script and for the value placeholders, instead of giving a single dictionary, you can give a list of dictionaries. So the SQL command will be run for each dictionary value in the list. Instead of giving a for loop explicitly, you can do connection.execute many and provide the list of dictionary to a single SQL. Well, there are two advantages for this. One is it looks more readable and easy. And the second important thing is it's more efficient. Instead of doing a for loop yourself, if you provide list of dictionaries like this, the query will run faster. So the syntax is simple. Connection.execute many, give the SQL, but instead of giving a single dictionary, give a list of dictionaries. Execute many also returns a cursor object and after executing the command you can see number of rows inserted by accessing result dot row count and obviously commit at the end that's all and run this you can see number of inserted rows equal to three let's try to verify that let's try to run this person's table and you can see there are four rows three new rows were inserted and since id is an auto incrementing column it has automatically provided the values two three four in the id column and these were the values which we have inserted from our dictionaries so this is how we can easily insert multiple rows into an SQLite database from Python. In fact, we will cover how to update or delete database rows. You can use the same approach to update or delete multiple rows using execute many. Now that we have inserted data into the SQLite database, let's try to fetch the database table rows in our Python script. First, you need to create a cursor object from the database connection and then execute the SQL script to fetch the table rows. 
you can use the select query to fetch the table rows so the sql would be something like select id name database phone from the table name persons and optionally you can give a filtering criteria here i have given date of birth less than a value which i will supply from the dictionary so this is the sql script and obviously since i am giving a placeholder i will supply the python dictionary here which will have this placeholder value dob so this is the python dictionary dob is january 1st 2000 so i will select all the rows where date of birth is less than january 1st 2000 so if you execute this sql select script to fetch database rows the output would be something like this in python you will get a list of tuples and the tuple will contain the column values here i have said id name date of birth phone that's why the order is id name date of birth and phone so the output would be a list of tuples which contains all the rows selected by this sql query so the result would be present in this variable called rows cursor so how to fetch these rows in our python script well you can run a for loop in this rows cursor and obviously access the tuple values like r of 0 r of 1 r of 2 r of 3 because it's a tuple you can select the first value second value third value something like that and then at the end you can close the cursor and close the connection so that's how you can fetch sqlite table rows in python in fact let's try to execute this example and here in the output we have got the desired rows and we have printed them by iterating through the rows cursor in fact if you want you can fetch all the rows in one go without using a for loop you can do that using rows cursor dot fetch all so this will give all the rows into a single variable which would be a list of tuples so we got all the rows into a single variable called rows let's try to print this so let's try to run the script now you can see the whole cursor sent a list of tuples as a result and we have fetched all of the rows into a single variable called rows using this command fetch all on the rows cursor in fact one more thing i want to show you here is there is this attribute called description on the rows cursor you will get the values of the column names of the each tuple column using this description attribute let me show you this so i am printing rows cursor dot description so let's try to run this i am seeing the column names on the first tuple member in this list in my sql script i have written id name date of birth phone that's why the column names are id name date of birth phone just by running a simple list comprehension here I am just taking the first attribute of the each tuple in the rows dot description list and if I run this I can see the names of the columns returned by the SQL cursor. So this can be useful if you want to know what are the columns returned by the cursor. So that was about fetching SQLite table rows. Now let's try to update a table row here. So it's just like insert you can execute a connection command. So the SQL would be something like this connection dot execute update persons set name equal to the placeholder value where id equal to the placeholder value so obviously since there are placeholders i will provide the placeholder values using a python dictionary so the name would be john doe and id is one so i am telling update persons table and in that set the column name equal to john doe where id equal to one so this is my update statement so in a row where id equal to one the name would be updated to john doe so after you execute the sql you can even get the number of rows affected by accessing the row count attribute on the result cursor suppose if no rows were updated you will get row count 0 if one row is updated you will get row count as 1 and if many rows are updated you will get the appropriate row count so this will be useful here and at the end commit the connection and close the connection let's run this example so this is the placeholder values dictionary this is the sql script and at the end i am seeing how many rows are updated then committing the connection and closing the connection let's try to run this you can see number of updated rows equal to one so it got one row with the id one and it has updated the name in that row in fact let's try to open our explorer and run the persons table you can see the name of the row with id one is updated to john doe so this is how you can update an sqlite table row in python now let's try to see how we can delete sqlite table rows create the connection run the sql script using the execute command here the sql would be something like delete from the table name persons where you can provide the condition of what rows would be deleted here i have given the condition like date of birth is greater than the placeholder value since i have given a placeholder i will supply the placeholder dictionary here the date of birth is jan 1st 2000 so i will delete the rows from the table persons where the date of birth is greater than january 1st 2000 
and if there are any rows deleted you can see that in the result cursor's row count attribute and ultimately you can commit the connection and close the connection so let's try to run this example i am running the sql script delete from persons where date of birth greater than the date of birth placeholder and we are committing the connection and closing the database if there are any rows deleted you can see that in the row count in fact let's try to run the persons table you can see there is only one row john do which has date of birth greater than january 1st 2000 so if i run the script i think the row with id 1 should be deleted let's try to run the script and in the output number of deleted rows equal to 1 let's try to run the table you can see only three rows are present the row with the id 1 is deleted because it has matched the delete criteria so that's how to delete the sqlite table rows from python all right we have completed the create read update delete operations on a database table one more thing you might require is to do transactions on a database table that means you want to do some two three operations on a database and they should be a logical operation that means either three operations should run or no operation should run that's what a transaction is so you can easily start a transaction using the begin statement so execute the begin statement and your transaction will start and while doing the transaction if you want to roll back the transaction you can do that by executing the rollback statement there is even a function called dot rollback on the connection and once you do all the transaction operation successfully you can commit the transaction to the database by executing the commit statement or else you can call the dot commit method on the connection so that's how simple you can do transactions in sqlite let's try to see a very simple example to demonstrate transactions so first i will execute a command to delete a row from the person's table and then I will verify that the person is deleted by fetching the rows from the person's table. Then I will deliberately roll back the connection and then select the rows from the table. I should see all the rows and I should see no rows deleted because I have rolled back the transaction. Let's try to run this example. So we are beginning the transaction by executing the begin command and we are deleting a person with the name John. In fact, we have already deleted the row with the name John. So let's try to delete the row with the name Bob. You should see number of deleted rows as 1 and in fact let's print all the rows and then roll back the transaction and see the rows again. Let's try to run this. So you can see number of deleted rows is 1 and there are only 2 rows but after I roll back the transaction and print the number of rows you can see 3 rows because the deletion operation was rolled back by the transaction using this dot rollback. So this is how you can easily do transactions on an SQLite database in Python. And you can do further reading at SQLite 3 Python documentation. So there is this tutorial section. And here in the reference, you have the methods on the connection object, which is cursor, close, execute. You can do further reading, what are the parameters. And you can even see the methods on the cursor object like execute, execute many. You can do further reading on what are the parameters, what are the functions to, etc. in this official documentation. So if you want to do further reading, please go check out the official documentation. So that's it guys. This is about interfacing with SQLite in Python using the SQLite 3 Python module. You can see I have created a blog post on interfacing with SQLite from Python. I have given you the images, notes and source code so that you can copy paste and do it in your own environment. So please be sure to check out the link of this blog post in the description of this video. Please ask questions or post your valuable feedback in the comment section. Hope you like this video guys. Thank you for watching. Peace.